our next uh, guest here is uh, Dr. Ted Raspiller of Tyler Becoming Bright Point Community College. He's here tonight with some of his key leaders, and, and he's been here since 2 p.m. as he was part of the afternoon work session of, of just listening and understanding. So uh, if there's any questions or comments he even wants to make about how he's trying to prepare our students and adults, really, for the high-tech jobs uh, of advanced manufacturing. But again, first and foremost, this is his update to the board. Welcome. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Dr. Casey. Uh, it's always a pleasure to come and brag about the great things the team at Tyler Becoming Bright Point is doing. And I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, start by saying how much we appreciate our relationship uh, with Chesterfield County. I can look at some of the sheriff's deputies and I see our part-time officers. Uh, several years ago, we entered into a resource officer sharing program um, with uh, Colonel Katz and they've been great on our campus and it helps us so much when we have just different issues that go on relative to Title IX, et cetera. So appreciate the county and I, I'm not gonna brag about Garrett Hart up here, but I'm gonna tell you that we are always um, keen to be right on the edge of when we need a workforce and we, we wouldn't trade our partnership with the economic development programs that you have going on here at the county. So it's much appreciated. Uh, we've been making it over there uh, through the COVID. We, it didn't come last year. We were, we've been uh, on and off in terms of how much campus activity, but because of our essential employees, uh, we've been able to maintain not just our campuses open, um, but in those critical areas where students need to get in there to use the labs, uh, we've been able to work to do the proper spacing, et cetera. So we've been able to continue you know, it, it's not just the truck driving companies that call me all the time for help. And so uh, it's really been quite a team effort over there these last couple of years, but uh, we're, we're very proud. I think, I think what you'll see, um, um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this all up. So head count's 8,500. I think last time I was here two years ago, it was a little over 10,000. So we're off still a little bit. Um, and it's been this way since, um, since uh, fall of 2019. That's what we compare to. And um, I, I have no doubt that a lot of that has been because of COVID. Um, again, uh, I'm quite proud. We've got the best faculty in the Commonwealth. Uh, over 80% were already certified to teach at a distance. Um, in remote environment before COVID. We didn't anticipate COVID, but we anticipated the need being greater than we could serve just on campus. So we continue to serve in that capacity. Um, our high demand workforce credentials, you're gonna hear a lot about tonight. Uh, we had exactly zero of those delivered remotely. Uh, March of 2020, by July of 2020, they had the full portfolio ready to go. Now, clearly, we're not doing heavy equipment operator training and truck driver training uh, virtually, um, but we do have some simulators, but um, I'm very proud of what they were able to do. You'll see here uh, about 8,500, over 8,000 come from right here in Chesterfield. That's one of the features, I think, of two campuses in the county and the population that we have. Um, I, I get thrown off by the numbers in the degrees, the technical programs, the certificates, pre-major, that's not students that don't know what they wanna do as much as that students that are preparing to do what they wanna do. A good example is nursing. There's a lot of science and preparatory coursework they do before they're actually entered into that major. So that's what that's all about. Um, we had some conversations about high school students um, at Tyler and how we can expand offerings that we have in both dual enrollment. Uh, here's what we've been working on. Uh, we've got about 2,300 Chesterfield students taking about 10,000 credits, saving Chesterfield County parents $1.6 million in tuition. Right? And that's, that's that little hidden gem. Now, I won't tell you the you're the car I'm driving. No, I'm kidding. But we, we are glad that we can do if this. If you came and here for a raise, you're in the wrong spot. That's right. I understand, yeah. sir. Sorry I understand. about that. Um, I wish we had 60,000 Chesterfield students coming to John Tyler to complete these programs while they're still getting support with bus rides, et cetera, and, and at the same time um, able to know they're going to be able to go into competitive fields. And so you can see here, we've worked, we got 16 um, 
newly credentialed um, dual enrollment faculty. These are folks from the high schools uh, that we have worked with to get certified to teach at the college level. It's not the same, and the certification process isn't the same. And then we've added 16 new dual enrollment courses um, uh, to the curriculum, uh, and many of those are offered online. And so we continue. That, that is triggered by our two plus two relationships with the universities we guarantee transfer of these classes. And that's why we have to be sure before we roll them out that we've covered all of the, covered all of the squares so there can be truth in advertising. This is more exciting, uh, to me anyway, because these are students that are coming onto our campus to study uh, in our labs uh, that, of course, as you all know, are state of the art. Um, we've got 17 students in the precision uh, machining program uh, but we've got several others that we do. And the other thing that we do is programs that are going on at the high school that we have a program for, we give them credit uh, for the classes they took at the high school. And so that's another way that we're able to help students get ahead um, while it's still uh, at the affordable rate, right? Um, concurrent classes, they do pay tuition when they come on campus like other students because they're going to take that seat. Um, but again, we're going to do it in a state of the art. That's not the case when we give credit for what they've studied at the high school. Um, but we want to be sure that they understand that they're going to get ahead coming to Tyler becoming Bright Point uh, in a field that we know is in high demand. So I'm joined here tonight with Dr. Bill Figge, our chief academic officer. He's going to talk a little bit deeper about our programs. Elizabeth Creamer, our vice president for workforce development and credential attainment. Um, she's got the best job in the whole state of Virginia. She gets to report to two community college presidents because, as you know, our Community College Workforce Alliance is our shared uh, programming with Reynolds so we don't duplicate things and we can keep those costs uh, down for business and industries. And finally, uh, Fred Taylor, who's our Director of Government Relations and Administrative Services. So, Bill. Mr. Figgy, good to see you. Good to see you. Coach Figgy. Coach Figgy, I'm sorry. That's Thank right. you. Appreciate that. It's a friendly amendment. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we're always trying to move forward with our academic programs. It's all about pathways for our students and how can they be successful. And so some of the new programs that we've just started are in digital marketing and project management. Uh, and then we're excited to start fall 22. We're excited to get pharmaceutical manufacturing off the ground. As you know, several companies are moving to this area. We appreciate Chesterfield County's support as we go for a Go Virginia grant to help fund uh, renovation of a lab, uh, to be able to buy all the equipment, that's expensive equipment, uh, to be able to provide a 17 credit career study certificate that will align directly into a technical studies associate degree program and uh, building it into bridge pathways for the high school kids to be able to get into this uh, new high demand, high wage occupation that's coming to our area. Uh, as uh, Chief Center mentioned, uh, healthcare, it's hard to find folks. We're starting in a PN certificate. We're just waiting for Board of Nursing uh, approval, and we expect a large number of students to enter this program starting in the fall. Uh, we're excited to announce that we have 98 students, our largest class for uh, beginning semester in our nursing program, our RN program, uh, this semester. So we're really working to advance that pathway to help this county and our entire region to be able to have the appropriate number of healthcare workers. Uh, and then also the digital marketing and uh, funeral service. Uh, Director Warren, two programs in the entire state, uh, our community colleges, to have a funeral service uh, program. And so we're excited to be able to provide new opportunities uh, for students to be able to run of the funeral home in addition to the program that we already have uh, that deals with embalming and other aspects of the funeral business. Uh, we're also starting web design graphic specialization program. Again, these are all new programs to meet the needs of our service area and our companies. Uh, some new initiatives that we have in place, uh, a transfer of Virginia portal. So as, as you've heard in the past, we've talked about, we have over 35 guaranteed admission agreements where when students come to John Tyler becoming Bright Point, they can do an associate degree and then transfer directly into a four-year uh, university, college or university. Uh, but working through CHEV, the community college system, and all four-year institutions have worked on a transfer portal and have also worked on direct alignment with the general education so that when you take a certain pathway of general education courses, those are guaranteed to be accepted into the four-year university as well. So great work that's happening in transfer. Uh, we're partnering with Chesterfield County on a Claude Moore grant. This is with Bon Secours, Chesterfield, and Tyler becoming Bright Point. 
specifically working with Meadowbrook students. They've started the program this year where students are uh, joining in a healthcare pathway. And then our faculty are gonna work with the students providing mentorship program, as well as a summer camp program that will kick off in August for these students to come to our campus. So we're excited to be able to work with Meadowbrook and their students, Bon Secours, and the connection we have with them, connecting these kids while in high school, pathway into a healthcare industry, then ideally directly in line, whether with Bon Secours or other company, uh, to be able to meet the needs of our healthcare in the area. Um, and lastly, uh, that I'm going to talk about is uh, get a skill, get a job, and get ahead. Our G3 program, it's last dollar financial aid. We have over 579 students in our academic programs, 211 in our Community College Workforce Alliance, who have gotten G3 funding, totaling over $1.1 million. Great opportunity for students in the programs that you see here, early childhood, healthcare, information technology, manufacturing, skill trades, and public safety and human services. So areas that are designed for students to get this last dollar funding, to get the pathway, to be able to get the jobs in these areas. So I'm now gonna pass it over to Elizabeth Kramer to talk about Community College Workforce Alliance. Ms. Kramer, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I do have the best job in the Commonwealth of Virginia, absolutely, because I help, I get to help companies to find the skilled talent they need, and I help, um, we help Virginians, hardworking Virginians, to find careers um, that offer them opportunities for continued education and career progression. That's exciting. Never has it been more exciting than in 2021. Let me catch up here. There we go, maybe. Never has it been more exciting than in 2021. We served um, about 4,500 students, but most importantly of those, we served 1,750 who were actively looking for jobs in critical industry sectors where there's a critical need for more talent. So that's information technology, it's um, manufacturing, logistics, healthcare, 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 and um, CDL truck drivers, you've heard about supply chain shortages and logistics, very rewarding work. And it used to be that CCWA was known by local businesses because we could do incumbent worker training, we could do apprenticeships, we could do um, pre-employment training, we could do customized training. We still do all of that, but by far the biggest demand that we have from industry right now is find us talent pipelines get us talent pipelines. So we've got high school certification boot camps. We have programs with Fort Lee to transition military members into civilian employment. We're working with social services to get people to work who haven't worked before. Um, we're working with uh, moms who are returning to the workplace after being out for some time with caretaking responsibilities, and the list goes on. At the beginning of the year, we were working with those that had recently been unemployed because of disruptions in the hospitality and food service industries. Um, we also have found an opportunity to train um, those families and neighborhoods in which there's historic levels of underemployment. People are working, but they're not making living wages. We were so successful at that that we have um, given out 70% more financial assistance to low and moderate income job seekers than any other college in Virginia. And our next nearest competitor in that area is Northern. So that's saying something. I've been through all that. Here are some of the businesses in Chesterfield County that we served. Chesterfield County is the county that sends us the most students. We'd like to see more. And I'm gonna end with a trend that we're starting to see in workforce development, and that is more and more opportunities to combine classroom and hands-on instruction at the Chester campus or the Midlothian campus of John Tyler. What we're now able to offer an increasing number and percentage of our students is you can earn and learn. Um, we have apprenticeship programs where we can actually pay for a degree program at Tyler following our CCWA workforce training. We have a nurse aid program where long-term care facilities, nursing homes are hiring our students from day one of class and they're putting them to work while they're in class so they have guaranteed jobs at the end. We've got manufacturing 
um, programs where manufacturers are willing to ante up a sign-on bonus and pay for some um, internships. I'll tell you, there's never been a better time to be a high school graduate or a community college student or a young person or a middle-aged person looking for a new um, career. We do everything from those truck drivers all the way to a teacher career switcher program that gets professionals who may be thinking about teaching after a successful career in something else into the classrooms where they're critically needed. And with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Fred Taylor, and we'll be happy to answer questions at the end. Welcome, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, we just wanted to highlight a development that we were working on at the uh, Midlothian campus. Uh, we are looking, we don't have dormitories at community colleges, but we're looking to build uh, apartments at the corner of Woolridge Road and uh, Charter Colony Road. And um, we are in a, uh, going to do a ground lease. We're in, uh, right now doing a partnership with Boyd Homes. We're finalizing the terms of that ground lease, uh, which they would pay us an annual amount, and then they will build the apartments and they will operate them and, and they'll generate revenue. Uh, we're looking, uh, they're market rate apartments. Uh, they're open to anybody, but we're ho uh, hoping that it's gonna be a lot of faculty and students who will, who will want to live there because it's obviously on our campus. We're currently in the design phase. Uh, zoning application will be coming forward in the not too distant future, we're looking at about 240 apartments, 10,000 square feet of retail space. The last bullet is we will be adding real estate tax revenue to Chesterfield County, because as you know, state property doesn't pay any, any uh, local taxes. And here is a, a tentative layout, um, and you can see Charter Colony uh, is uh, at the top and Woolridge on the left. We got about, it's about eight or nine acres that we're looking to do apartments there. So we think it's gonna be good for the college, good for our faculty, staff, and students, and also good for the community. So we're excited about that. Thanks. That concludes our formal presentation, but I feel compelled um, just to share a little bit more. Um, I mentioned that pharmaceutical manufacturing technician program. And that is really at the ground floor now, but it is going to be big. Um, Y'all, you heard earlier about the notion of onshoring the things that we offshored years ago, and this is one of them. We've got three companies that are in Petersburg. Y'all know this, um, and we've been working with them and the Virginia Economic Development Partnership. Last year, they started a talent accelerator with us for those to prepare technicians. There'll be, it looks like there'll be in three, there'll be three different options for them. The first one will be an entry level credential. Uh, the second one will be a full career study certificate with us in pharmaceutical manufacturing technician. And then the third will be a two plus two we do with VCU School of Engineering for those that want to go on and do the full pharmaceutical um, manufacturing engineering. Those jobs are good jobs. They're clean jobs. They're fifty to seventy thousand dollars a year salary. They've told us beginning of fall of 2023, we're going to need to hire hundred a year, and so and that's just with the three companies here. Now you know the the plan there is building the ecosystem for pharmaceutical manufacturers. We um, I was doing a little calculation. You know our degrees are down ten percent. Our high demand workforce credential enrollment last year up fifty four percent. People understand they want to get connected with work, with good work, with good middle skill work. It's come over to John Tyler. Let me also say that of the tw over 2,000 credentials that were earned, over 500 were in advanced manufacturing. We do five high demand credentials specifically to prepare folks for high uh, advanced manufacturing positions. We, we don't have a stronger support network, maybe healthcare, but that supports what we're doing at the college than advanced manufacturers. And, and we know uh, that those students are going out and getting competitive wage jobs in good, clean environments for good careers, not just 
not just work. So it's exciting. That pharmaceutical program, you're going to hear a lot more. I'm going to come back here and talk a lot about that with you. Uh, we just got some support from Garrett and Joe for our uh, Go Virginia grant. We're, we're looking at $750,000 between Go Virginia and Cameron Foundation. We're going to renovate some labs on our campus for our pharmaceutical manufacturing program to be incubated uh, on our way to when it's a full, full-blown operation. So I appreciate this. Please, I hope, I, I hope that you will encourage your constituents to check us out. JTCC.edu, Community College Workforce Alliance, it's all there. We got something for them. Wherever they're at, whatever they're doing, we can take them to the next level. And on July 1st, we won't be saying we're Tyler becoming Bright Point. We will have arrived. Thank you all very much. We'll take any questions. I'll take the easy ones, as always, the hardball ones, going over to those three. Board members, the presentation was certainly chock full of good stuff there. No questions, but, but thank you so much. Uh, we will be in touch. Obviously, uh, nothing's more important than our workforce, and uh, you, you are building the future uh, of human talent here in the county, and so we want to continue our partnership with you. We, extremely important. So thank, thank you. you for what you, all of you do, and thank you for all, all of you for being here and your, uh, your part in this presentation. Excellent. Last comment is attached to the PowerPoint was the community profile card. We do those every year for you, so um, we'll get that printed out and get it over to you as well. So thank you all very Thank much. you.